uh, really nice uh, seeing you. Thank you for coming. Uh, I think uh, this will be a very cozy event. Uh, thank you, Andreas, for visiting us, coming so far away from Milano. Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, maybe it would be nice just to get to know you and maybe you could share briefly your background. It's mostly uh, for me interesting um, what kind of experience, uh, experiences you had uh, which shaped you uh, and made you as you are now and so yeah, for what I do. So thank you very much Andrew for the invitation and everyone for coming. Uh, so I'm Andrea, I come from Italy, um, uh, the city is called Naples, uh, it's a place where pizza comes from, so if you, if you have um, ever learned that it's not coming from China, but anyways, uh, jokes apart, um, I've been living uh, 18 years in Naples and I moved to Milan, uh, where I'm, I've been studying um, business administration, uh, then I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, the out of the United States to study at Emory University. Maybe the guys up there know what is Emory. Yes. Uh, but the, and then I studied a master in, uh, in marketing in Barcelona. Um, and after that, I started working at Google. I worked at Google in Dublin, San Francisco, and Milan. Three offices, two years. I was working as an industry analyst. Um, I was basically helping companies, consulting, I was a consultant paid by Google to support big corporations to make strategic decisions through the queries of Google. So my clients were Emirates, uh, all the travel companies, all the job related companies. They needed to decide which uh, route to open, which one to close, thanks to Google. I mean, at least they had always the data of Google. After that, I moved, I uh, worked at Vodafone um, in Italy and I was managing the prepaid market, it's a seven, seven billion market each year, and I was I had the pleasure to manage a 80 million euros advertising budget. So, you know, whatever big boards you want, this is the yeah. most uh, possible to buy. Um, but the challenge was very important. Vodafone was decreasing 24% each year, and uh, I had the chance and the opportunity to digitalize it and digitalize the offer in order to get back to customers that were went to the competitors. Um, after reaching the square, so minus 24 to plus one, I said, I'm done, I should do something else. So I did partnerships with Vodafone and doing partnerships I understood I could do some entrepreneurial stuff. And in my entrepreneurial stuff, I started my company. Um, it was called Machiavellico. We were doing team building, social learning, group recruiting in an experiential way using VR and uh, IoT devices. Um, Long story short, one year, wasn't scalable, sold it, paid my mortgage and started consulting other companies in order to help them grow. Um, out of that, 2014, started one of the first chapter of Cairo in Europe uh, and I've been running this, I guess this month is going to be the event number 44 with over 5,000 Okay. That was a, <laughs> a very fast <positive> introduction, <laughs> but just to give you some uh, bits of myself. So, uh, so what I do now? Okay. Sold your company so I sold my company. So I said, what do I do? Do I go back in a big corporation, or do I keep rushing into things as a startup or as a freelance? So I, I asked to my community. I luckily have lots of friends around Italy and Europe. And I started helping startups to grow. Uh, my main job right now is uh, the support, so the coaching and the activities of make, in order to make funnels for growth of, uh, of companies, startups. Um, and next to that, I teach. I'm doing. I'm a professor of applied entrepreneurship and digital marketing around various universities. I would say no, not business yet. I should uh, yeah. apply. Uh, but the, um, and the last part, the last bit is the one that goes next to Startup Brain. I organize events. I do fine events for Startup Brain per year that are a lot. Uh, on the other side, I, I do an event that is called Growth Hacking Day. Uh, growth Hacking is the new methodology that we're going to talk about later. Uh, and the event is the largest one in Europe with 500 participants and 20 bigger companies. This is what I do right now. 
what are the things of the appearances are like most important for you, like which really shape you as a personality or put you on the yeah. like let, right let, me, let me say a very old English thing. Ah. There are three or four moments of my life, and I think of the life of everyone, that you can say, if you would have not gone there, your life would have been changed totally, yeah. or would have been yeah. keeping at the same thing. So I think the first gateway was my time at Emory uh, in Atlanta, in the US. Uh, it was super funny, I was a finance guy. So I was totally into finance, numbers square, the most important thing. Um, I was studying investment banking. I had the pleasure to work with a couple of these, to study with a couple of uh, Nobel Prize over there in Atlanta. I was like, I went there because I wanted to learn finance and it was the hard way, you know? So going there and there. But then a guy, I uh, was the marketing director of Coca-Cola, a small company that is boring now over there. Um, he came in and said, you know, like I started talking and uh, explaining why marketing was the center of the company rather than finance or any other part of the, of the company. And, um, and to be fair and honest, that was the first moment where I had to, to make a, a big move, so a whole big change, such a finance, such a marketing. Well, why, um, why were you want to do that? Because he, he, convinced me, he convinced me and convinced maybe other 4,000 people because it was a plenary discussion. But at the <laughs> end, it was, you know, one of the moments where you said, you know, like, it's like, what shaped you? Like, this is the first moment I can recall that shaped me for, for forever. Mm -hmm. Second one, Google versus Procter & Gamble. I chose Google, not Procter. Uh, maybe because marketing was to go to, to the books in Procter and Google was more interesting. And the third one for sure is the moment I started my, so I left the corporate life after four years and a half and went into uh, the entrepreneurial side. That uh, if any one of you did it, um, it's just changing the rules of your life rather than um, just of your, um, I mean, it's not just work, it becomes your, uh, I, I don't know if it, if you call it dream, uh, nightmare, or you know whatever you do, you think about that. Okay. Yeah. But so so with um, your consulting side, that with teaching at universities, uh, you're uh, organizing startup grand events. Uh, also, I know that you're traveling a lot and uh, also making lectures and sharing your insights and everything. Why and how do you manage to do that? Um, I guess the Denver of the why is to have an impact. Um, so I think there are two, two types of people in the world, uh, people that follows and people that lead, and I'm not one of them. So I try always to listen to the people that want to give some insights. And this is one of the things I urge to, and I always suggest to anyone to listen. And the second one, it's more like, I mean, on me, it's like, I wanna, whatever I do, I wanna have an impact uh, on people. So if I consult someone, it's not consulting just on the company, but also on the person that I'm asking for help, because at the end, it's just a matter of, uh, I cannot do it alone. Um, let me come in and help you to do that. Um, so the why is the impact, and mm -hmm. the second part of the, of the thing, how do I do that? I do complaints, trains, Ships or somebody, whatever, whatever I go, I try to sleep and work. Uh, maybe when I land uh, somewhere, but it's um, I think it's I mean I've never done I think I've never done a week without traveling in the last two years. Uh, but the most interesting part uh, is that I've never done a week without meeting a new person, and that's uh, I think the most more interesting because you know like anywhere you go, anywhere you meet someone. You have an opportunity, and it's just you that is deciding if that opportunity is important or not. Yeah. Okay. So what are we gonna do? Start up? What did you like? Uh, come, come with me. Let's let's work on something. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes apart, but that's it. I mean, any anywhere you can meet your co-founder or the person yeah. that invests in your company or the person that uh, gives you the best job of your life. Okay. Consulting and finance job tomorrow, right? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, it's all about opportunity and opportunities. And uh, uh, if 
do at least an eight week traveling. I still haven't understood how to do it with, uh, from my office in Milan. But whenever you travel, you get to meet the persons that are actually shaping the city and help you. Um, that you are doing a very important job in putting together an ecosystem. Uh, at Tired of Nine, it's not an easy thing to do anywhere. So it's like, I remember my first time in Tired of Nine, whenever you were writing the speaker, they were saying like, you know, like, who are you? Why should I come to talk to you? Or what is this community? And can I get paid uh, 2,000 euros to go? And that was the first, uh, they were the first answers. And it's, this is our, if I, if I put myself in your shoes, uh, you're in the best position to meet everyone and uh, yeah, really yeah, to exactly. put the people together in connection and that's it. Exactly. Okay, so um, when comparing now, because you have experience and knowledge about two different kind yeah. of uh, subjects yeah, yeah. <laughs> on earth, like finance and marketing, right? So is still marketing quite more cool than finance? I don't think it's just a matter of coolness or not. I think um, marketing is now in the center of the company. So let me give you a very specific example. The guy that was that is running a company, okay, uh, normally has a consulting background. If you think about big corporations, normally has a consulting background, and this consulting background may, can stay to McKinsey, uh, a big four name, whatever thing, uh, and. If you see the, the last 20 CEOs of Vodafone, they're all coming from either a big uh, bank or a big consulting firm. Um, that is changing. That's not going to be happening anymore every time uh, because these guys have no idea, no clue how to sell the product and how to make the product to enter the market. They have fantastic knowledge about numbers and procedures, but they have no clue what is the customer and how to talk to them. Uh, so you see that Coca-Cola is moving into, uh, you know, all the Coca-Cola now has a, a string around, but if we can, you can become an actor, you travel to Italy, or all this kind of stuff, because they want email. They have no interest anymore in uh, being the happiness company, but they want your email so they can give you 10 times per year the new spot and the new information of the new product. And this is a total shift from a branding value that was before, and for sure they were the most spread. And on the other side, it's a lead value, so a client value, a user value. And uh, the companies that are putting the user at the center, I would say, uh, if, I, if I can give you an example, one for all, Dropbox. Dropbox was giving, is giving 16 gigabytes of free hosting space, and actually now it's, it's a lot more, um, just because you're giving them an email of the person or you're confirming your date of birth or uh, I guess you're connecting your social media. And these are very stupid stuff, but this for, for your user, but for them it's everything. They're classifying a person, uh, they're having everything in the center of the information. And this is, you know, the, the, the shift from finance to marketing. So, yeah. The companies in the future are going to be led by people that are going to understand customers rather than numbers. Yeah, but yeah. So as 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 you mentioned, uh, Dropbox. So um, what they did in order to attract maybe people right on board because uh, they were struggling in the very beginning. Uh, so they got investments and they spent like enormous amount of money, like giving for people like twelve dollars, I believe, for opening an account and starting using it. So. Well, it's, it's what? It's, it, is it built marketing? Isn't it risky? It's super risky. So the, let me give you a, a, an overview of what happened. Uh, so Dropbox, US-based company, um, super invested from the moment zero. They, had a, a, they were doing AdWords to get customers. And the customer was paying $99 per year uh, to have an account of 100 gigabytes. gigabytes. Um, and the cost per acquisition, not per lead, per acquisition, so for a real paying customer, it was 199. So double, exactly double. So that is not possible. This is not going to happen anymore. So they did a process methodology called growth hacking, and the guy that did it 
actually he was the guy that invented this methodology so super nice person that decided you know from day zero that he couldn't do just marketing he needed to do marketing on data and marketing to grow um, he moved and changed the total product saying let's give for free to the people with this referral system gigabytes so that they refer other people that are going to have other gigabytes for free and blah 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 from a thousand users 10,000 users, something like this, they had, they passed to over a billion now. So uh, the whole thing was just, you know, me sending invitations to Indre and Indre sending invitation to someone else. And that thing happen, happens uh, for a reason, just because you're, they're giving away something for free. So their space is actually a cost and a cost for acquisition of, of a new customer now got reduced to zero, almost zero, because it actually it's free to send email to India saying, do you want to gigabyte more? Uh, refer a friend. And they're not paying, and anyone is paying in this thing. So it's very risky because if you have a product that is so many users and no one is paying, yeah, then it could be uh, more than $12 per person of, of expenses, right? <coughs> but on the other side, data is one thing. Um, anything that is uh, flat. Other examples, but Dropbox is a super nice example how data now is growing, so everyone is needing more than 60 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. uh, I bought the, the $199 per year thing, now it's one two terabytes or something like this. Yeah, yeah. So they made me more, <laughs> so they made more money with uh, one person than the more the money they were doing before with two, yeah. and they have a billion users to send emails to. Okay. So yeah, I think I think it's it's risky, but for sure it's interesting at this moment to try out things where customer is always at the center. And um but are there any, are there any um, other uh, safe ways um, or kinds or types of growth hacking like to be sure that you you hack and you grow? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, whenever you talk about growth hacking, you have you have to know that it's not going to be safe. Okay, so and I mean, one thing you're not going to be safe. So any anything is going to be safe. And second, the second thing, um, the product could vary, could change. Because at the sense of the strategy for it to be used, you always ask the user if you're okay or not. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested in this new function for developing it or not. Mm -hmm. If you are um, interested in buying this for 10 euros or not. And this can change and shape the whole system and the whole company. And if you think about any company that uh, is now applying growth hacking, um, many of my clients, and I can give you the full details of data, they're selling things that are not existing. Mm -hmm. They're really selling things that they haven't created and developed yet. Because this is a smoke test or a test of uh, um, it works or not works. Mm -hmm. So let's say that we have a pizzeria and uh, from tomorrow we're going to do sushi. Okay? Mm -hmm. But to do sushi you need to have, you know, you need to start buying fish, you need to have the people that want to do fish mm -hmm. and they want to they are able to cook that and prepare it in a perfect way. Um, they're not doing just this. I mean, these guys are doing this, but they're not anymore. They're not skilled yet for that thing. Mm. So what happens, uh, theoretically, if we had a pizzeria, we would start talking with our customer and say, would you do sales for, we're just starting next to a sushi place. Could you refer us for a month from now? Mm. Or would you try this? sushi dish and we actually did this and this is a, an example, a real example from one of my clients. He has a pizzeria and he started his sushi place in the south of Italy out of customer surveys and customer suggestions. So yes, I want a sushi, but I can't do Brazilian one. Okay, okay, wow, wow, okay. We have a month to learn how to do sushi in Brazilian way. <laughs> That's true. I mean, if you have a frozen yogurt store, you cannot 
now meets are you the token the token you have right there yeah uh, yes we are okay so it's weird if you have a project you have a thing so far but uh, if you have a project you have a thing uh, there is no way you can adapt you sh I mean, you should definitely have a fat free token yogurt. Now it's very important. Or if you accept Coca Cola, you cannot not have Coca Cola Zero, right? And it all comes into options. And so there are safer ways, um, but it takes more time. Yeah, but would you give an example? Because it, till now it's like really dread to form. Uh, we can we can take any single thing. I can use, I don't know how many of you are. Like for a small start. Okay, so let's do that. Don't even have a lot of like resources. Okay, if you don't, rotating actually actually is great. Many times it's just fine. It's a, just okay. a matter of your time. Okay. Uh, the 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 first thing you should do is understand map your customer inquiries. So where people are actually asking things. Um, and I can give you an example of one of my clients. Uh, they are a software as a service uh, mm -hmm. um, startup. Um, they have a, a solution, um, and this solution has people using it, so good. Um, but there are a thousand user, a thousand user solution. They should go at least to twenty thousand in order to see to be at least in the market mm -hmm. in order to do their previous day. Uh, with them, we started doing hundred tests. Okay, so hundred different ways in order to understand where their customers are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, mapping the funnel, so the funnel of growth is a very important thing, and there are so many funnels inside this because at the end we need to map how to grow, but we need to map also how the people are actually looking at you and finding you. So one funny thing, uh, people that were looking at uh, get, becoming their customers, their paying customers, were not people looking for them, but they were people that were looking for alternatives or their biggest competitor. Mm -hmm. So let's say their competitor is black, mm -hmm. uh, five alternatives. Uh, to black, right? Uh, they were the first one in the in this article, and they got the thousand users, nine hundred. Uh, they got from there, from this article. So what we did, we started publishing articles of saying alternatives to black, right? This is a free thing. You could do it in your blog. You can ask a friend that is working in a uh, newspaper, and this is all getting because of that. The, the second funnel that is very interesting is the funnel where. The customer converts every time, so it's like every month starts paying. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is an example we showed with Spotify. Spotify, I guess you all have, uh, but many times Spotify um, gives you the opportunity to discover new songs. And this is not just because you, um, because they have new songs in their library. Many times they actually give them edits because they uh, upload them in bulk. But the idea is that if you have new songs every week. I guess I think it's a weekly thing. So if you have new songs every week, you're gonna be interested in learning a new and new songs, and then you're addicted to new songs, and you're gonna use them. Yeah. Another example that's coming from real life, and you have for sure seen it: uh, Netflix. Okay, Netflix has this, I would call, easy way of cross-selling that is keeping you on that platform. As soon as you finish the uh, the season of uh, how. How I Met Your Mother or um, Get Away with Murder, How to Get Away with Murder, they're proposing you as a free series, the same topic, the same type, in your email, on your notification, uh, on first header, like that. I finished a shooting uh, uh, series. After that, I mean, I'm, I wasn't into shooting at all, but I, I looked at it, I watched it, and I was like, okay, this is that, and now I think it's the only advertisement of. Uh, series or uh, films, movies, the shooting. And this is perfect retargeting. And this is, these are techniques that are cross-platform and cross, and if applied cross-platform and cross and everywhere, um, they can bring you surely lots of value. Mm -hmm. And okay, so and, and from your experience, what was like the biggest failure? Like either you consulted or maybe you were doing this like maybe yours was? Um, Biggest failure. It comes beforehand, so you know I didn't, uh, I, I didn't, I wasn't part of that. Yeah. But I can really tell you this uh, because it, it, it's, it, I, can, I can still have it clear, very clear, when the guy was telling me this thing. 
Um, so think about a company that has a product and is selling it online. Mm. Um, they have I mean, like 20, 100 people that bought it. It's an, I think it's something you can, you can find also on Amazon. Um, they even listen to the customer at all. So the people sacrificing, saying you know, like, we would like to have this, we would like to have that. Uh, and that was consistent. It was becoming an, an important thing. They didn't, they didn't listen to the customer. They went straight with the new release of the, of the solution and no one was done anything more. Uh, and this happened uh, to them uh, just because they, they couldn't listen to the customer and they were like also in the test that they were making, everyone was saying, oh, we want, we like the, the product as it is. But why, why, why did you let listen me, to Let me, let me bring you an example that I can tell you the name. This happened with the new Coke and Coke. Coca-Cola and the new Coke. I don't know if uh, anyone was uh, uh, aware of this. So at some point in time, 15 years ago, Coca-Cola mm -hmm. came out with a new Coke. Okay? okay, a better version of Coca-Cola. Okay. What Same Coca-Cola. <laughs> better version of Coca-Cola. When everyone went into blind tasting, everyone was saying, but they failed to ask one question, and the question was, "Do you like the smell of Coca-Cola? Would you taste it?" Coca-Cola was not more existing, but and you have the new Coke. Would you be happy about that? They couldn't ask this question. They didn't ask this question. What happened? One day, uh, the guy from San Francisco, the San Francisco guy, for sure he had it. As in, one day, they brought out the new Coke. So, in bars, they couldn't have any more the Coke one month. And they had the new Coke. What happened? People started back testing. Because no one actually asked if they would have liked the new Coke rather than the Coke. Everyone was saying, I love it, mm. the taste. But they haven't asked if they would have switched from one product to another. So after a month and a half, they reproduced everything, every single uh, Coca-Cola and they came out with a new Coke. Mm. And this is but sometimes it is also like in some customer behavior, uh, behavior um, and it's uh, usually they get upset and they don't have choices. Uh, maybe if it would be like all Coke and new Coca Cola and all together, people would start preparing and tasting the new one. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. It's just a matter of listening mm -hmm. and many times it's learning. Because mm -hmm. whenever you listen, you can learn how to approach it and how to, um, to, start, to target the market. And I don't know if you, if you are a user of Apple Music or anything like that. So every single Apple product uh, has this just one way of usage, okay? Because I mean, Apple mm. thinks about one thing and goes into the market with that thing. Mm. Uh, that is the example that what whatever I just said is totally wrong because they are they have the power, the branding power of saying this is the way we should. Yeah. Uh, you have iPhone. I have an iPhone. I don't have any more the um, AirPods plug. Like you cannot put the jack of of the of the AirPods. Plug and one day to the other, they said you don't need it anymore, and it's like why? I mean, I have all my headsets. Headsets. How do you do that? Mm. In that moment, everyone was screaming like, "Come on, no one is gonna buy it!" And now everyone is going around with AirPods because they invented yeah. that thing, and they were not. And the same thing happened with iPad, and the yeah. same thing happened with iPhone, and the same thing would happen with the. The iPod, everyone was having a problem with their product, but then they tried to explain the solution and now everyone adapted it to it. But isn't this a, a good example of manipulation of the system? 100%. I totally agree. Uh, Who yeah, does that in a company like this? Is it, are they marketing people? Or? Uh, I don't know. That was Steve. I, mean, I guess Steve was everything. But, uh, but I think there are a few companies that can do that. Mm -hmm. There are a few companies that with their branding, they can move people from one experience to another. So mm -hmm. I mean, I, did, I don't have any more headsets. I, I, don't, I don't want any more with that. So whenever I need to listen from a PC, I'm screwed. Because I, I don't have this, I, I just have iPod for everything from Mac, iPad and, uh, and iPhone. So whenever I need to put and plug in something, I cannot do that anymore. Yeah. And that's a total change, or I don't know how many of you have a, sport, a smartwatch, but whenever you have a smartwatch, um, it's a total change because you're not watching anymore, you're not just seeing the hour, the hour but you're 
I'm interacting with your phone and you're seeing notifications. So people are not giving out any more the phone as before. So when I was using a smartwatch, the number of pickups on my phone every day, so pickups means whenever you touch your phone and raise it, uh, I was doing something like 100, 100 times per day. Uh, whenever I had the smartwatch, it was decreasing to 12. So think about my life, okay? So take 12 pickups and 100 pickups. 100 pickups means that you have four pickups per hour. Mm -hmm. If you sleep, then you should have five or mm -hmm. six pickups per hour. Then if you have six pickups per hour, it's a lot, so one out of uh, 110 minutes. If you have 12 per day, it means you have one every hour. So your phone, you're not touching it for one hour because you have notifications here and you know if someone is writing you, so you don't need to check it and anything else. I don't use it anymore, <laughs> but... Uh, Why not? Long story, uh, too much technology can make you not too effective, I would say. And there are some things you should actually take away from uh, from the, the new part. But yes, I bought a new one yesterday, so it's, <laughs> I'm going to use it again. Because at the end, it's, a, it's an efficiency thing for me, for sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, but so. Yeah, again, my question, uh, to, to continue my question, since that is like in startup world, uh, and uh, when you look at the good example, it looks like the, 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 the product uh, or service uh, is just presented to the market and everyone starts loving it. I believe there's a lot of preparation put in there with many researches usually are being performed. Um, but, so, I don't know, so what, how, how do you say? Is it like, again, marketing people from data, creating some kind of the models, or there are like more people analyzing um, psychology or human behavior? Um, so there are how to create these kind of the tendencies? Because they, they create the trends and people just like follow the trends. To be honest, uh, your question is, I would need like two hours to answer to this, but. Uh, <laughs> Because it's, mm -hmm. it's great, I mean, it's, you actually touched the, one of the most important parts, like how do you create innovation, how to create innovation that matters to people. Exactly. Um, that is very hard. There are lots of companies that are failing to innovate. And Kodak, I guess, is the biggest example of failure. Mm -hmm. They had something like 70% of the market. They are out of the market right now. Mm -hmm. And it goes up and in to 2004, 2004 to 2008. In four years, they got out of the market because they couldn't switch from analogic camera to digital camera in the fastest way. Mm -hmm. uh, long story short, Kodak, when Nikon and Canon uh, got out with their digital cameras, mm -hmm. they got out with a much powerful analogic camera. Okay, so that was their response, not coping, but going again and keeping the old part. So how do you power innovation and market it? Um, there are a couple of trans uh, there are a couple of companies right now um, that have inside their uh, their structures um, even in Europe. So we're not talking about just the US uh, innovation centers, mm -hmm. and these innovation centers are very much powered and talking with customers outside of the, outside of the company and stakeholders inside the company. Um, I wouldn't say this is a methodology, but this is the first step in, in order to bring innovation mm -hmm. inside the company. Mm -hmm. uh, second step, I guess, the first thing is like many startups are doing great products and companies are buying startups. And this is the best way to find a, a product that is already validated thanks mm -hmm. to the market that the startup did. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this example, we can find uh, Nest, Google goes Nest, Nest. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the, the whole part of. Um, of um, home management, the home management system, so air conditioning and everything else. So they went in, they did their thing, it worked, Google goes. And this was how Google made the innovation in that part that market mm -hmm. for customers. Mm -hmm. For sure, Google scaled it 100%. Actually, 10 times, 10 hundred times that uh, the, the market that they had, but yes, for sure. Um, how can a startup make innovation that matters to their customers? If they have customers, for sure they can talk about uh, what the customers are. Um, they can talk 
the customers to understand what is good, what is not good, and what, what they can actually do better. Um, another thing that is, I guess, the best way to, one of the best ways to, to do that is to go in research centers. There are lots of research centers. You can do it one in Vilnius. There are so many around Europe and the world where they're actually studying the behaviors of some of people uh, against social change and uh, activities that are happening. And this is the best way to get an, an idea. And then I, I participated to a study and it was interesting. So they were asking me which are the products that I would kill, I mean, it would have been very bad if I didn't have it, and if I didn't have them anymore. So mm -hmm. let's say you can choose 10 products that you need mm -hmm. to keep because they are yours mm -hmm. and no one can touch them. Mm -hmm. For innovation purposes or for um, system purposes, state purposes, mm -hmm. these are your things. And what would you do if you didn't have these 10 things then, you know? And that study was very interesting because um, one of the uh, percentage that was interesting is that there were 1,000 people um, in 10 different countries, so a bit spread in Europe. Um, one of the top things was iPhone, okay, so the phone. So the phone is actually something that no, no one could take out from your life. But the second thing was a thing related to food, okay. So the second object that you say, like, don't touch my pizza, that could be really, really like over there. And the third thing, and I was this was totally astonished. Uh, I used to say um, we have women products and men products, mm -hmm. okay. And one of the if you separate men and women, men want their razors, mm -hmm. and that's it. Like if you are a man, you buy just a razor, okay. That's it. You just buy that. And we don't have their um, uh, things for the for the menstruation period, and they don't want it to get that out. So the third thing after phone and food, one type of phone and one type of food was the you know mm -hmm. counterpart of uh, what we do every day or every month. Mm -hmm. okay. So these are all interesting researches to say there are so many uh, parts uh, where and there are so many. Uh, interesting researches where you could really understand how the world is evolving and how privacy, data, and things are going on. I don't know if I talk too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. <laughs> we have time. So uh, now it's time for for questions from you and. Uh, yeah, I know that there are people building uh, their products. I know that there are people from marketing. So, uh, industry uh so yeah maybe you could share your examples or i don't know maybe issues or challenges you're having now yeah go for it if you have any questions if not i can keep talking um, that's the part or we can talk in yeah, the yeah. networking yeah. part because uh, that's how it's going to any questions well, only for business and secure um examples you have mentioned there may be many from b2c do you have some b2b examples yeah. absolutely so many uh so B2B um, growth is something that is super interesting. I don't know if you get emails, um, I mean, you are you are actually selling B2B stuff, right? Yes. Okay. So many times you get- Mainly for enterprises. Exactly, so companies. Um, emails that are sent to people that buy, that are you know, responsible for buying things. Um, I have an example that is super easy, like, um, if you send to 100 people uh, three different types of emails and see how many people are actually hitting that, so A-B testing, and you combine it with uh, uh, analytics data, uh, you get a super interesting research on how to power up the 10,000 people that you have in your database. Uh, but whenever you talk about growth techniques, that is all coming from what the customer wants, and the customer in this case is a company, a corporation. So if you want me to, to give you an example, there are these LinkedIn that started building up uh, tools for companies. So they were starting selling it uh, to companies. So the, the company pack, the corporate pack, as they say, uh, or the university thing. So if you are a person that is managing a university, so you are a B2B customer, they started selling you the B2B version. It's the same thing as the B2C, but they 
build these bank accounts at the same time to better for them. For Slack, Slack is one of the top uh, B2B platform right now. Uh, Slack is a software as a service where you know you, you can uh, talk and manage projects. Uh, they open up uh, the whole, uh, you know, like candidate or start your organization you to work on Slack. And if you if they had ten different emails of the person, they started went going to the HR director saying, "We have ten people in your organization. They want to do that. They want to come and work on Slack." And that was a, a way of mixing the B2C and the B2B environment. But whenever you apply growth to a B2B segment, you're not changing the main topic. And the main topic is customer. So the person, if you start understanding what the, the customer wants, then you can attract people and companies at the same time. I do that for uh, the event I have, um, that's called the Growth Hacking Day. Uh, with CyberBrain, I cannot do that because I don't have enough time from one event to another. But growth hacking day six months from one another, and I ask uh, companies writing write a review. So the person that came is like, "Can you please review my uh, the event? Do you like it? So give me feedbacks." And we publish this feedbacks on the social media with uh, thanking the person. So a guy from Ericsson came and said that the event was great. I started doing growth hacking the day after, um, and you see the people that. Start liking it, uh, sharing it. What, what if I can tell you that from that example, ten people from ten different other companies bought that ticket because they saw a peer, so a person that was at the same thing at the same level as them, saying, "I like that. I started doing that the day after." This is a small B two B example, but this is an example now to say, you know, if you take influencers that are the micro influencers that are at the same level as, as your customers or your potential customers, they're actually more, they're converting a lot more than a testimonial that would say, you know, like um, Brad Pitt or anyone saying, Growth Hacking Day, amazing place to, to go. It's, it's not consistent, right, with the people. But it's the same thing, like, if Indra now tells me I should do something, I, in my event, I would say, uh, let, me, let me give it a try, because she's doing the same job I'm doing. And a person that is teaching, uh, I will listen to him because I'm teaching. And these are all stuff that, you know, like combining the, um, opinions is super easy. It's super easy and you can do it tomorrow. I, I know that you have customers, so take a review of your customer and send it to everyone. The customer is going to be super <laughs> happy. <laughs> the customer is super happy and the new customers are going to say, wow, I have the same problem. So, you know, like, uh, the Google search for weather increase when the weather is good. Okay, so good weather, people search more for weather. Okay, and this is like why? I mean, you know that's good and something like that. And you see that the number of searches of weather goes up if there is a long line of days with good weather because people are actually expecting rain. Okay, and that's and that's strange, but you see, like there are ten days that it's not raining. Day number eight and nine, people are actually starting looking and concerning, like it's gonna rain. Let me let me look for when it's gonna rain. And that's an example that if you know that, and that's a tool that's called Google Trends, you should use it from day one. Uh, you should really like change the thing. Like if you're selling umbrellas to your advertising on eight and nine, day eight and nine, instead of doing it for the 10 days that no one is interested. Stupid example, but very consistent. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, I, I, can, I, can, I can keep on and give you this example because it's, uh, there are some that you get in the clue on now why it's happening. Anyway, question? So, we, well, we can continue yes, uh, sure. in, uh, in barcodes, right? Uh, so, okay, just, uh, just the last question I had, and uh, 
in the bottom row after the flag goes through. Perfect. Okay, so thank you very much for visiting. I hope you enjoyed the, the stay. The weather was good. Did, how, how many times did you check for the weather? I checked for the weather <laughs> that one. So I'm fine. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. You enjoyed the whole thing. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. Thank you.